What's up you guys, we're back again with the XJ and today we're gonna be doing the front lift. There's a couple of things we already did. We did the rear lift, the leaf springs from Rough Country. We did the slip yoke and all that in previous videos. Everything is from Rough Country for the lift. So for the front, we decided to go with the long arm kit. It's a four and a half inch lift as well. Same as the rear. Uh, we got the coils and all that. So throughout this whole process, we did a couple of things already. We removed the upper control arm nuts for that side and for the ones that hold it right here on the rear because those are the hardest ones to get to while the diff is in. So we wanted to prepare for this to install the front lift. We also removed the track bar nut, the one that goes to the bracket, and also the pitman arm nut for the tie rods. So that's all going to come off right now. The whole diff is going to be removed just so that we could get to everything make it a little easier and also because we're gonna replace the upper control arm bushings it would be really hard to get them through here so we just decided to drop the diff and get to everything while the diff is out the front drive shaft was removed when we did the slip yoke eliminator so we didn't even bother putting it back on because we knew we were going to remove that the front shocks were also removed they were brand new replacement shocks and since we are doing a lift on it we removed those because we are going to install the rough country ones so we're going to start off by removing the caliper the calipers held onto the knuckle by two 13 millimeter bolts we had loosened those already and we could just pull off the caliper so once the caliper is removed we're going to use this to hang it possibly from here see if that's possible so i won't put too much stress on this either way these are going to get replaced we just don't want to damage these we can use them for something else but let me go ahead and pull this off with two hands next we are going to remove the cotter pin from the drag link and then remove the nut which is a 19 millimeter. Once we have the left and right uh, tie rod removed from the knuckle, we're gonna go ahead and remove the steering stabilizer from here. That's an 18 millimeter bolt. Make sure you put a wrench on the back so it won't spin. Once the steering stabilizer is removed, we could go ahead and hit this with the fork. So this is what we're gonna use. Just jam it in there like this. And hit it with the hammer. Once that is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this 50 millimeter bolt. With this side of the track bar removed, put the bolt back. We also put the bolt back for the steering stabilizer. So once we hit this with the fork, the whole track bar is gonna come off. Next, we are going to remove the four 15 millimeter bolts that hold the sway bar to the unibody. So it's two here and two on that side. We are going to remove the lower control arm and the upper control arm bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nut on this side. It's 21, we're using the 13 16 because that's all we have with the deep sockets. And you could go ahead and also remove this I think it's a 13 to get the spring out if you want. We're just going to drop it with the springs. And then those, we're just going to push them all the way in. And that's it. The diff is out. So, this could definitely cause a death wobble. Especially if you lift it. Both of them are shot. So, we're going to pull this all the way out. And, I do recommend removing the clips right here. Because you can see this one got bent when we're trying to pull out the diff. So we're going to bend it back into place. Now back over here with the control arms. This one is ready to come out. So just pull this nut through this hole. Now the control arm is out. The upper control arm. You can see the bushing is pretty much shot as well. So all these things, when you lift up a Jeep and you don't replace the bushings, of course it's gonna have the death wobble. So now it would be good to replace the bushings if we're gonna add a smaller lift, but 
We're gonna go with the bigger lift, so all this is not needed. And then we have to remove this nut and bolt. This is gonna come off as well. So I'm pretty sure it's the same size as the ones on the diff. So in the beginning of the video, we forgot to show you guys the parts. So these are the four and a half coils. This is the long arm stuff. These are the front shocks. And this is the track bar mount with the track bar. Sway bar end links. And we have a couple more things. We also have the steering box spacer from Iron Man Off-Road or something like that. So it comes with three bolts and these washers, the upper control arm bushings. This is a part number, K3128. And then the steering stabilizer from Monroe. We're gonna start off by installing the steering box spacer. So there is three 60 millimeter bolts right here. This one is coming off, so might as well get it out of the way. But it's one here, one there, and another one up there. So I'm gonna get two of those. I'm gonna have to do it with two hands, so I won't be able to show you guys, but basically you remove those, you pull out the bolts, you pull out the spacer, you throw on the new spacer, the new hardware, and then you bolt it back up. Steering box spacer is in. Couldn't show you guys because it was really hard to hold that with one hand so it wouldn't just dangle right there and to slide the new one in. But this is the old one. You can see how thin this aluminum piece is. Now we got the steel spacer in there. And next we're gonna remove the track bar bracket. So I believe these are 19 millimeters. Let me get the socket real quick they are actually 80 millimeter nuts and bolts so there's two bolts down here now let's get the track bar bracket and see if we can use the same hardware this is the new track bar mount so we're going to use the same hardware to mount this back onto the unibody so this is the difference you can see it's way lower like about two inches so we're just gonna put this on here and use the same hardware so let's see if i can do it one half now we got the track bar mount on so let's go over to the diff so up here what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this ball joint remover tool and hopefully we're able to pull out this bushing right here and also this one so what we have planned so far is to put this on here like this it goes like right over the the bushing thing and then on the other side start pressing it with this or something smaller we got both sides off so this one was on this side like this, make sure. like that, and we hit it with the with this for a bit, and it actually pushed it out a little bit. But then we got this piece off. You can see how shot this was. This whole piece of rubber was already missing, also on this side. So we got this big chisel, and we started hammering this side right there. And then it actually just kind of like fell out. So that was just done. And then for this side, uh, it was also with this little outer lip on this side, same as this side. And we hit it with the big hammer on this side. And then we're just kind of beating the crap out of it right here until we were able to kind of get a little bit of the lip and we started hitting it with the chisel and it kind of just popped out. So we, this tool didn't really work for us. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the new bushings. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna figure this out right now. So after we install them, we'll tell you how we did it. Now both of the bushings are in. This one went in real easy. This one was a little bit more of a struggle because of this. To get the impact on here was, was kind of difficult. So all we did is we used this cap from the ball joint removal tool and that fit right over this lip and then on the other side we had this 
which went over this. And then we use this seat thing and we just use the impact to drive it all the way in. Like I said, that one was super easy. That one gave us a little more of a struggle because of this, this little angle right here. So now that these are in, we could go over to the body and cut those mounts. Okay, so before we start cutting off these brackets, we're going to remove this inner alignment thing that's in there. So these are like size 13. It's gonna take a while to back this off. But basically you just remove these two nuts right here and the bracket falls out. So let me go ahead and do both sides, the passenger and the driver. And then we'll get to marking this up of where we're gonna cut. Okay, so we marked up the bracket roughly of where we're gonna cut. There's two lines. So this one we're gonna grab it from there, go up a little bit, and then this one we're gonna grab it from there and go down. And then we're gonna shave it all down. We did the driver's side already because we wanted to see how tough it was gonna be. I'm gonna show you guys. This is what we did for the driver's side. So the whole bracket is off. That's what came off of it. A couple other pieces because we still had to like cut and shave it down. So we used the Zaza with the Diablo blade and that blade actually went through it pretty good, pretty fast. And then now we're, uh, we were hitting this with the flat wheel to get it to where it is right now. And the grinder, we used it, but it was kind of messy and the sparks were all over the place. So I think the Zalzal was better than the grinder and stuff. So let me go ahead and do the passenger side and then I'll put you guys back on. We cut it down all the way as close as we could to the unibody. So now we're just filing down the edges. We don't have any sharp edges right here. And we're going to spray with some primer. So. don't want all this to rust out so give it a couple of coats of paint so now we're going to install these on the cross member since the kit doesn't come with any instructions we missed uh, the part where we had to install these in the previous video so we're going to go ahead and do that now uh, so far we know that these six bolts are going to be used on this so it's going to be one two uh, which is, goes on the cross member directly to the cross member and then three so that's six, three for each side. And then for these upper bolt holes, we have this, the crush sleeve in the middle, and then these two right here. So we kind of went ahead and uh, installed the washers for each bolt and all that. And washers for this as well. So these, I believe these are for the upper control arms. And by the way on the previous video we used we reused the stock hardware so that has to come back off and then this goes on here like this so the new bolt's gonna hold it there and then that other bolt in the middle and then another bolt right here to this hole and there's nothing in that uh, bolt hole so you can install the other uh bolt to that so once we remove these nut and bolt and we bolt this up we're going to uh put some paint or a center punch where the other bolt holes are going to go up here so then we can sandwich everything together we went ahead and installed this bracket we installed all the hardware down here all the way in and we made sure that the bracket was as close as possible to the unibody so now we're going to take our center punch and just hit it right in the middle or as close as possible to the middle and then drill the first small pilot hole now that we got the pilot holes drilled in we're gonna go on the back side and there is fuel lines and brake lines right here so we're gonna put this little piece of aluminum to cover the the lines because when this drill bit goes through all the way we don't want to hit those lines so, so we're gonna drill the pilot hole on the rear bolt hole all the way the front one doesn't have to go all the way through the other side now we're gonna drill both holes we're gonna open them up to half this rear bolt hole we're gonna drill it all the way through once again and on this side we're just gonna go through the sheet metal on this side now that we drill both holes we're gonna go ahead and remove the bracket once again okay now that the bracket is off for this rear hole and this rear hole only 
we're gonna open it up with the three quarter inch bit and we have to fit this crush leaf right there so we're just gonna open it up then wobble it out a little bit and then this should be able to fit now that we have the sleeve in the unibody we're gonna go ahead and insert the bolt through the bracket with the washer put it through the crush leaf and then try to get it to the other bolt hole on the back side of the unibody it's gonna be kind of tricky with one hand so i'm gonna have to go ahead and install both this this one goes with this uh flag nut i guess you could call it and the washer and it goes right here so i'm also gonna install that one that one's way easier because you could just go like this and then you can see the nut right there so on this one um we just opened up the hole with the three quarter inch bit just this front hole the one on the other side we left it with the half inch hole so the bolt went all the way through we put the nut and we hit it with the impact we ran it all the way in the only issue is that you can see these two lines they are sitting right on the nut so it's going to be rubbing what we're going to do is we're going to take a rubber piece of hose and just wrap these two lines in the hose and then just zip tie it to keep any of the vibration from damaging the lines we're going to install the lower arm first so we're going to get the measurement from the center of this bolt hole to the center of this bolt hole and it should measure 29 and three quarters and we're going to get that measurement from the inside of the arm so there's an outer side this side because you can see that this bracket is bent inwards so it gives you two different measurements so we're going to measure from the inside of the arm to get our measurement now that we're done measuring we're gonna make sure that this is facing up and this is the hardware that's gonna hold this side to the new cross member and for the front we're gonna use the same old uh, hardware so let's go throw this on the jeep we're gonna leave the bolts loosely just hand tight and also this gem nut is gonna be just hand tight now we're gonna go ahead and install the upper control arm which I'm gonna show you now. So for this upper control arm, they send you the hardware as well, but we were having trouble fitting it in here. So we took a drill bit that was kind of tight and we just cleaned it up and now it works. Now the bolt goes all the way through. So for this one, this specific one on the driver's side, uh, it has a bend for the diff. So we're thinking of getting the measurement from the inside i mean from, sorry from the outside so this is the outside the bend goes inward and it has to measure 15 and one quarter so we're going to measure from center of the bolt hole to center of this bolt hole and then uh we're going to throw it on on the passenger side the control arm is straight so you can get the measurement from either side inside or outside i don't know why this side gave us trouble we had to tap it in so it could line up and we could put the bolt through so now we have both sides in we had done that one already so we're doing we've just finished doing this one we're gonna slide the diff back so we could hook up the arms to the diff and then we could go ahead and start doing the rest of the stuff before we slide it back we're gonna go ahead and remove the sway bar end links to remove the sway bar so it won't be in the way or get caught up with anything and those bushings are gonna have to get replaced go ahead and remove this this is like i think like 18 millimeter if i remember right and then there's two there's one on that side one on this side you pull it off with the washer and then the sway bar endings comes off it got a bit dark but we were able to install the control arms we were struggling a little bit with the top ones but we were able to jack it up a little bit and that moved the diff enough for us to install the bolts through the uh, mount now we're gonna remove these clips and install the coils. So we're gonna take both of them off, put the coils in and then put this. So there is a spot where the coil has to sit. It's right here. So it has to go all the way to this side where there's that little cutout. And then you put the uh, retaining clip back on and you tighten the 13 millimeter bolt. 
Next we're going to install the shocks. So there's two 13 millimeter bolts. I need to come all the way off. So this is the front shock. And all this comes in a little bag. So there's two of these bags. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the shock up like this. Like this. And then we're gonna cut this. But first we have to put install this then this round one and then from the top you put this squared one and this or else this is not going to fit because you're not going to be able to get any threads on here so we already did the passenger side and we just tightened it enough until it started kind of like coming out the sides a little bit so we're going to do the driver's side now it's going to be a little more difficult because of the brake booster so we're going to have to get a wrench on that side now we're going to install the brake line and we're also going to grease up the caliper sliding pins we're going to grease we're going to put some of this lubricant on this pin which goes here there's another one on the bottom one and that's what holds the caliper to the knuckle the these bolts go through those pins so we're gonna grease them up and slide the caliper on. We got this brake line in. On this side, the bracket, I think it has to go upside down. Like we installed it right here. Cause if you put it the other way, the bolt hole is gonna be on the opposite side and this brake line would have to come out this way a little more. So we installed it upside down and it has this little loop right here, which doesn't interfere. I don't think it's gonna interfere with anything. Um, we put the copper washer before and after that little uh, brake line thing right here now it's in there and we already did the passenger side so we're actually gonna do the track bar next so this is the hardware that came in the box with the track bar that's for that side this hoop thing goes over the diff and then this goes on the diff side so let's throw it on there and then we'll adjust this once everything is on we kind of just gave it an even amount of space so that when we adjust it, it's uh, an even amount of threads on each side. We got the track bar in. These are not even tight. So we still have to adjust them. We might just tighten them a little bit just so they won't flop around. Next, we're going to remove this from the sway bar end link. We removed this side already. So we didn't hammer it because these bend. So what we're going to do is use the ball drain remover tool. We're gonna put it like this without any fitting on the back side. We're just gonna straight go through the front of the bolt and push it out. We did this side that way and it came out pretty easy. So now we're gonna do the driver's side. So we're gonna put the wheels and take it off of the jack stands, but we just remember that we have to bleed the brakes. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get it off of the jack stands. Now that the Jeep is on its own weight, we're gonna install this the sway bar comes with this little piece and we're gonna put the washer in put it in that hole and then put the nut and we're going to tighten this up with the three-quarter uh, wrench and put a screwdriver through this to hold it to get it tight now that both sides are in we're gonna have to run to the parts store to get these bushings because these are pretty worn on both sides so we're gonna replace them while the sway bar is off but before we do that we're gonna install the skid plate for the transfer case we did find the hardware so that's gonna go on here with these bolts and then I think we are still missing the ones that bolt up to this Actually, before we even put this skid plate on, we're going to put the front drive shaft on because we have to get to the bolts right here. So once we put the skid plate, we won't have any access to that. Okay, so next we are going to remove the pitman arm. So we're going to install this drop pitman arm that came in the kit. So we can line up the track bar with the drag link. 
and we picked up this tool from Modazone to remove it to remove this uh, pitman arm we have to get this nut off then slide this on and hit it with an impact so that we could pull this uh, pitman arm off we just got back from AutoZone and this is what we got for the sway bar bushings this is the part number FA1783 they are the AutoZone brand they didn't have anything else but these and we would rather put these than the ones that were on here because the ones that were on here were shot so we're gonna install these on here and make sure well what we did is that we took the actual sway bar into the store because there is different sizes there's 28 26 24 23 and i think 18 or 20 millimeters something like that we got the bushings in and the bracket now we're gonna install the sway bar end links so we have to install this part on this side i'll show you that right now there's no detailed instructions for this we're just kind of assembling the way we think it goes so this is how we installed the driver's side it's gonna be the big washer then the thick wall okay hold on so it's gonna be the bolt then we're gonna put the lock washer then the thicker washer then the flat skinny washer and then this is gonna go on the other side so it's gonna go like this it's gonna come from underneath and it's gonna go on top I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's where that's the way we're gonna install it. Before we put these, we make sure that it measured 11 and one quarter from here to here. It says on the instructions on the line that from top to bottom, so I'm guessing from here to here, we're gonna throw it on there and then bolt this up. And then on the edge, before we put these little pins, we're gonna put these washers because it only it looks right. I mean, fits right there so i guess that's where these go so let's throw these on now that the sway bar is installed we're gonna throw on the drag link with the new uh tie rod end right here all this is well it's not new but it's from autozone so we got all this uh the drag link of that we're only missing the zj stuff because we are gonna do the upgrade the zj upgrade uh instead of having that hollow tie rod we're gonna install the one solid piece tie rod and it has a beefier tie rod end that goes onto the drag link so this side is the passenger side this side is the pitman arm side we're gonna throw it on there and bolt it all down except these we're gonna leave these loose because we still need to unline the jeep actually before we install the drag link we're gonna install the stabilizer And then we're gonna throw this on so the same as the old one, just like you pin on one side and then you uh, tighten it up on the drag link on the other side. I'll show you guys once everything is installed. We got the sway bar links on, everything is tight on that. The sway bar bolts are in, the drag link is on, the new stabilizer is on. 18 millimeter bolt and nut and then this was like a I want to say like an 18 or 17 we put the cotter pin in the this side is on to so the pitman arm the new fitting is on as well the cotter pin is on uh we bolt this down also on the this side now we have to uh run over to AutoZone and get the zj tie rod for this side and then that's it for the steering for now i think we're gonna adjust the lower control arm if you look at the jeep from the side you could tell that the wheel is a little more towards the back we took the passenger side off to try to readjust it but measuring 29 and three quarters from the inside gives us 30 inches on the outside so if we go 29 and three quarters on the outside it's going to be shorter on the inside so we're just going to leave it as it is at least for now until we get it to an alignment shop but while we were adjusting it we kind of seen that it's missing a good chunk of 
weld right there. So we're going to spray it a little bit of paint to stop the rust because it already has some surface rust. Now we're gonna throw it back on and bolt everything up. We just got back from AutoZone and we got this side of the tie rod. The other side they didn't have any stock, so we have to go back for it. But this is the benefit of going from a XJ tie rod. Well, at least the driver's side of the tie rod to a Grand Cherokee. So it's a different design. The Grand Cherokee has this little bend right here, but it doesn't affect anything. Uh, this is hollow all the way across. And this was one solid piece of metal. This is one tie rod. And then the XJ1 has two of these tie rods. So you can see right here on the XJ, it's way thinner than the, the Grand Cherokee tie rod. So we're using this off of a 95 Grand Cherokee six cylinder. The eight cylinder, I believe is the same thing as well. And all we have to get is the little sleeve that holds this and the tie rod that goes to the dragging together. So this is the, for the driver's side. This connects to the driver's side knuckle. We got both of the tie rods in. Now, while we wait for this last tie rod, we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel spacers. So we have these four and a half to 5.5 wheel spacers. We run Wrangler wheels. These are from Spider Track. So we're gonna need these in order to run the ones that we wanna put on this XJ. We're gonna leave this for another video. But since we have a little bit of free time right now, we're gonna go ahead and install them. So all we're gonna do is just wire wheel the, the studs right here, take off all the little uh, debris that's on here, spray them down with some brake cleaner. And then we're gonna use some blue Loctite and install these, torque these to 100 foot pounds, and then we'll throw on the new wheels. There you go, we have the new wheels on the XJ. I think they look pretty good. What do you guys think? These are the JL Rubicon wheels. This tire is pretty low, but we gotta fill them up. We got the rear ones on as well. We just gotta put the red locker on those, but we're not gonna move it until we have the tie rod. Right here, you can see the difference between the XJ tie rod and the Grand Cherokee tie rod. You can see how thick, how much thicker the Grand Cherokee tie rod is. We're gonna install this side to the drag link. We got the sleeve in the mill today. So we're gonna throw this on here. So this side, if you guys remember, one side is a reverse thread. I'm gonna get this in, hopefully an even amount of threads to this tie rod. This one is not on here tight. We just left it like that because we want to have even amount of threads on both sides so this side won't be short and the other side longer. We drove it to the car wash to give it a little rinse. But the power steering is giving us some issues. It is making a lot of noise so we might have to replace that and also air up these tires and then we're going to drive it to the alignment shop and get it aligned. That's it for this video. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at yonke underscore OXC Films. I'll leave that in the description down below and we'll catch you in the next one.